Hi, my name's Tom, welcome to Quick Licks Weekly, and in this lesson we're going to be expanding on what we looked at last week, which is an introduction to a new or slightly different way of tuning the guitar in fourths. Uh, in this lesson we're going to talk about scales in this tuning, I'm going to try and be a little more concise than last week, and then I'm also going to um, outline one lick, um, just to sort of whet your appetite, um, that you'll be able to try uh, in this tuning if you want at home. So before we get started, let me uh, give you the tuning notes. So we've got E, like standard, A again like standard, D, G, C and F. So like I mentioned uh, last week, this uh, new tuning is a fantastic new way, or not necessarily new, but new for me, fantastic way of looking at the guitar uh, in a new light. And certainly for scales, it makes life a lot easier. Instead of having to learn full six string um, uh, voicings of the scales, though you're still more than welcome to do that, you can just simply take scale fragments um, and build them up around the neck. For example, um, let's just have a quick look. We'll talk about the major scale and then we'll talk about the pentatonic scale because I know they're sort of the two most common and then I'll give you a lick which is in the pentatonic scale afterwards. But the major scale, let's just take this pattern. So we've got third fret on the E, fifth fret, seventh, same on the A string, three, five, seven. On the D string we've got th uh, four and then five back up to the octave, and, and, and this is in the key of G major. So when we hit the octave in uh, standard tuning, we could have continued with that pattern, but when we hit this string, the B string in standard, we would, would have had to have moved our finger up uh, a fret because of that major third. In this tuning, however, we don't have to do that. So as soon as we hit the octave, what we can do is we can start that exact same pattern again, uh, and what I would do is that major 7th, the 4th fret on the D, I'd slide my finger up to start again, so we actually get a 4 note per string passage there. So let me just play you the scale in this tuning. So you can see it's a lot more visual, we've got that pattern which repeats and then if you have uh, 8, 9, 10, 11 string guitars or you know you're insane, um, you can just continue this pattern on and on and on and on and you don't have to make concessions for um, the adjustments uh, in tuning as you go because it's all fours, there's no major third in there. Um, you can still do the full six string, um, uh, three note per string shapes. The only thing you need to do, and it is a very minor thing, is move any note you would play on the B and E string uh, down a fret to accommodate for the C and F tuning. So instead of doing which we would have done, we move that shape down one fret, so it's... I haven't had my tea today, so I'm a little bit sloppy, but... Um... It's fairly easy to get under your fingers once you practice it for, for a little while, and some of the shapes actually become um, a little bit easier. There was one I was using earlier, which I think... Yeah, the Mixolydian. Um, I found a lot, a lot easier to get under my fingers, so there are advantages there. Um, so that's it as far as scales go in the three note per string sense. When we get to pentatonics, life gets a little bit a little bit tricky because we can't do the you know the typical things that we're used to doing because of that adjustment in the tuning. What we can do is modify our shape. I talked about this in the last lesson, so instead of going which we would have to do instead of having to move our reference point down. Um, to the 4th fret, which can be a little bit awkward, we can move it up. So we play 5th fret, 8th fret, 
fifth, seventh, fifth, seventh, fifth, seventh, like normal. Slide that seven up to the nine, which we could do in normal tuning, in standard tuning as well. Then we hit the seventh fret, and then hit the ninth, and then seventh, and then ninth, and eleventh, and so on. And if we think of that in a sy symmetrical sense, we can move this first bit down, start on the third fret, and play third fret, fifth, third fret on the A, fifth, seventh, and then Seven, uh, fifth on the D and start that pattern again. So, so this is sort of a, uh, an, it's called an anacrusis or it's a note we're playing before we start the run, but we can start on the fifth fret of the E. So that's another way to play the pentatonic. And then hit the uh, root again and start that exact pattern again. So it's a, a lot more of a symmetrical way of looking at things. So um, let me play the lick now. Um, it's slightly complicated in terms of groupings, and I'm sort of trying to channel the short, sort of Sean Lane approach for this one. He used to do uh, pentatonic runs with a lot of hybrid picking. Uh, used to group the notes um, in odd groupings to give an interesting rhythmic feel. And fantastically, it lends itself to this um, tuning really, really well um, because. Uh, we're all always in tone gaps and it repeats across the neck. So here it is up to speed. So we're starting this lick off with a group of four, which um, it doesn't fall into the pattern of the lick. So again, it's sort of like we uh, a little motif we might do to introduce the lick and we play third fret on the low E hammer on to the um, fifth, and then I'm using hybrid picking to hit the third on the A, hammer on to the fifth. So that's third on the E, hammer on, third on the A, hammer on, for the one, two, three, four. Now, I'm, I'm not going to explain the picking as I go. Um, I might have a quick word about it at the end, but it's whatever feels comfortable. I'm usually hybrid picking when I'm changing strings, using legato wherever possible. So we've got our intro to the lick. Then we uh, do a group of six, which is f one, two, three, four, five, six. And that is fifth fret on the E, third fret on the A, fifth fret on the D, uh, sorry, fifth fret on the A again, which is a D note. Slide up to the ninth, fifth fret on the D, and then seventh fret on the D. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we play a group of five, which is one, two, three, four, five, which is uh, seventh fret on the A, fifth fret on the D, seventh fret on the D, and then fifth fret on the um, G string, and then hammer on to the seventh fret on the G. One, two, three, four, five. Then we play the group of six again, that exact pattern, and we play it up here. So I'm not going to explain the um, frets to you because you should be able to work that out because it's just a visual symmetry there. Just repeats. All right, I'll be kind. It's ninth fret on the D. Uh, no, it's not. It's seventh fret on the D. Fifth on the G. Seventh on the G. Ninth on the G. Uh, seventh on the C string. And ninth on the C string. Which still sounds weird to say out loud. And then we do the group of five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm sliding up to the 11th fret to finish the lick, which is the fifth in terms of the key. So I'm gonna play it slowly first and count, count through the rhythm and then I'll just play it slowly. So we've got one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, end there. Uh, here it is very slowly. And here it is again up to speed. 
Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Next lesson, we're going to be sticking, talking about this tuning, this fourth tuning, but we're going to be talking about chords. So hopefully stick around for that, and uh, I'll see you soon.